this is Frode and welcome to Actualize Notes TV, where I deliver five big ideas that we can use to actualize our potential. And I give you some tips on how you can apply the ideas. Today we have another great book, Eat, Move, Sleep by Tom Rath. Eat, Move, Sleep, subtitle, How Small Choices Lead to Big Changes. Tom Rath is an expert on the role of human behavior in business, health, and economics. He has been regarded by business leaders and the media as one of the greatest thinkers and nonfiction writers of his generation. Among uh, other things, he is the best-selling author of five international bestsellers that has sold over five million copies around the world. And I, it's safe to say, and I don't exaggerate, when I say that this book is among the top three books that I have ever read and among about a hundred books on self-improvement, this is the one that was the most packed with big ideas that I'm very excited to teach you now. If you want to eat right, move more, or sleep better, this is the book for you. And you can think of it as a manual for staying fully energized and fully engaged in your life. Now, I want to start off with a, my favorite quote from the, from the book. Prioritize eight hours of high quality sleep ahead of all else. You will be more likely to have a good workout, get more done at your job, and treat your loved ones better when you sleep. put sleep first. Remember, every extra hour of sleep is a positive investment. It is not an expense. And we will talk more about sleep in the fifth big idea. Five ideas. If you have any questions, you can just comment them below the video. Now, Actualizer, let's get started with the first big idea, which is eat plus move plus sleep. Let's consider two different scenarios. In the first scenario, you wake up and you eat a healthy breakfast. This healthy breakfast makes it more likely that you will exercise, and you exercising makes it more likely that you'll keep eating healthy throughout the day because you feel so good and you feel so powerful. Now, after a day of healthy eating and exercise, you will also get a good night of sleep. The next day, this starts all over again. Good movement, good eating, good sleep, leaves, um, makes your next days good. Then, a different scenario would be that you wake up with about four to five hours of sleep, a lot less than you need to feel fully rested. Now this makes it more likely that you will crave unhealthy foods, so you eat an unhealthy breakfast. This also means that you feel worse, so you don't really feel for going for a workout. Now, when you have eaten poorly, slept poorly, and not moved throughout the day, you will have a poor night of sleep. At least it's more likely. And all in all, this leads to a downward spiral of all the things we don't want to experience. And that is why Tom has structured the book so he focuses on eating, moving, and sleeping. We want to prove all of them at the same time, instead of just going for one of them. Because if you get a good night of sleep, it's more likely you eat better and move more. If you get a bad little night of sleep, you will eat unhealthier and move less. It's more likely. So we want to focus on all of them. And the latest research shows that if you focus on all of these elements at the same time, it is m easier to actually follow through on them. And the odds of success increases. So just remember that. We want to focus on all of them. While remembering that we have limited willpower, so we want to do it in small steps. Now for some more practical ideas on how we can eat right, move more, and sleep better. Next big idea, net gains. Tom says that uh, every single choice matters, as its subtitle also suggests. Um, how small choices lead to big changes. Consider that if you eat, um, you choose soda over water. Tom says that this is a net loss because you choose something unhealthy over a healthy thing. But if you choose vegetables in over french fries, it is a net gain because you chose something healthy over something unhealthy. And you, you can also consider if you drink coffee, that's a net gain, because it's good for you. If you put cream into that coffee, 
it's a net loss because of the extra added calories. And this idea of net gains and net losses, plus one, minus one, reminds me of Abraham Maslow, who is the author of Toward a Psychology of Being. In that book, he talks about that everything registers in our subconscious mind, every single choice we make. We can't hide any of our choices from ourselves. And he says that if we do something we are ashamed of, it registers to our credit. Minus one. And if we do something honest or fine or good, it registers to our credit. Plus one. And he also says that the net results will uh, result in us despising ourselves or loving and respecting ourselves. Ralph Waldo Emerson echoes the same wisdom in Self-Reliance, where he says that vice or virtue emit a breath in every moment. In other words, we do immoral or moral behavior in every single moment. So, the practical uh, tip uh, Tom gives us is, yes, he has a great quote to this, uh, for this tip. Ask yourself if the next food you put in your mouth is a net gain or a net loss. Repeat throughout the day. Every single choice matters. Next big idea, measure it. A very fascinating study showed that simply measuring improved people's amount of movement. They, uh, some experimenters asked a group of people to we simply wear a pedometer. They didn't tell them to move more, they didn't tell them to exercise or do anything of that sort. But what they found out after the experiment was that those people who had worn a pedometer, simply worn it, had moved in average one mile extra per day. That's 1.6 kilometers per day. And the total amount of uh, movement activity levels increased by 27%. It wasn't just their movement that increased. <laughs> That's just insane. This shows that simply measuring something improves it. And if we want to improve anything in our lives, we have to measure that. If you want to uh, gain, I mean, lose weight, you need to measure your weight every single day and see if, uh, for the long-term results and how you can adjust your food intake. If you want to measure your, if you want to improve your time on a 5k run, you need to measure how fast you run during your training, etc. And one of the most common ways to measure your simple movement throughout the day, to have more energy throughout the day, is to do 10,000 steps. This is, uh, the research has shown this as the widely accepted healthy level of activity. And often, of course, more is better. Less than 5,500 steps will regard you as sedentary. So, 10,000 steps is about 5 miles. In other words, 8 to uh, 7 to 8 kilometers which is not nearly as daunting as it sounds. Because consider if you take a brisk walk for 30 minutes during your lunch break, you will have gained about 3,000 steps. If you do an active sport for one hour, you will have gained 8,000 to 10,000 steps. And that will be your <laughs> target for the day, just from one hour. And uh, I like to joke uh, to some people I know that when I gain my, um, reach my target of 10,000 steps, I just um, order someone to carry me around the rest of the day, because I reached my target. No need to move more than necessary, right? Yes, of course. It's better if we move more. So, Tom also gives us the tip that we want a daily goal of 10,000 steps if you measure your step throughout the day, and we also want a weekly target of 70,000 steps, because it's not all days that we can do 10,000 steps. And we just want to make up for it the next day, if you can't. So if you want to feel better throughout your day and have more energy, measure your how much you move. Can you buy a, a pedometer, GPS, a cool polar watch like this? Or um, simply use a, ca a step counter on your mobile phone? I promise you, you'll have more energy. Next big idea. 12 hours. So, a team of researchers made a group of college students exercise and they wanted to test how their mood 
were throughout the day. So they uh, tested the, this group who exercised with a control group who didn't exercise. And they saw that uh, the group that exercised had a better mood that the, than the others. And they, they had uh, expected this based on previous findings. But what, they were, what surprised them was the durability of this increase in mood. Smile face. The students who had exercised for 20 minutes, moderate intensity workout, simply a bit short of breath for 20 minutes, they were in a better mood for two, four, eight, and even 12 hours later. Imagine that, having a mood boost for 12 hours after just 20 minutes of moderate intensity workout. And that leaves the question, are you working out? If so, that's great. But if you aren't, is a 12 hour mood boost enough of an incentive to get you started? Also, if you exercise in the evening, that's better than not exercising at all. But just remember that you're basically sleeping through a 12 hour mood boost. Another benefit that I like by exercising in the morning is that I don't dread the exercise that I will have after work or after school or after pretty much every all of the day. It's done. I'm done with the worst part and everything else during the day is a breeze. How about some 12 uh, hour mood boost? Just remember when you go out for a run or a workout in the morning, remember that you're not alone. I am doing it too. Next big idea, 7 to 9 hours equals smiley face. The latest research has proven that the amount of sleep that we, 95% of us, need to feel fully rested, that's fully rested, is about somewhere between 7 to 9 hours of sleep. And this has been proven through an experiment where people were locked, or not locked, but they were placed inside a building where there were no clocks or no windows and they just told this um, sub uh, told this group to sleep whenever you need to and what they found out after a while of this uh, experiment was that only 2.5% of the people could get by with less than could feel fully rested i mean with less than 7 hours of sleep the other 2.5% would uh, feel fully rested only if they got more than nine hours of sleep. In other words, the group that got uh, feel fully rested with less than seven hours of sleep are simply mutants, and the group that had to sleep more than nine hours are preparing for a hibernation during the winter, all year around. But for the 95% of us who need but uh, for the other 95% of us, we simply need seven to eight, nine, seven to nine hours of sleep if you want to feel fully rested. And I want to emphasize this point, it's fully rested. Anyone can get by with six hours of sleep, but they won't uh, be as alert and perform as good as others. This was actually proven in a, an experiment where researchers wanted to test how alert people who got less than seven hours of sleep were on some on-screen tasks. So they would have to do some um, tasks on this screen. To see how alert they were. And the results? Well, those who had gotten less than seven hours of sleep performed way worse than people who had gotten more than eight hours of sleep. So, to conclude, sleep is not a luxury. Sleep is a, ba it is a basic necessity, Tom Rath says. And it is one of my favorite phrases. Seven hours to nine hours of sleep, we want to feel fully rested. I do about eight to nine every single night. Twelve hours, if you want a twelve hour mood boost, work out during the morning or uh, during the day. Twenty minute moderate intensity workout is all you need. But more is better. Measure it. Simply measuring improves something. Why don't you use it for your movement? Measure 10,000 steps each day or any other way you want. Net gains, plus one, minus one. Everything you put into your mouth is either a net gain or a net loss. Choose wisely. Eat plus move plus sleep. You want to improve all of them at the same time. If you don't get enough sleep, we will eat worse and move less. 
if we eat crappy, we might move less and sleep worse. If we move less, we might eat crappy and sleep worse, etc. So that was a quick look at Eat, Move, Sleep. Thank you very much for writing the book, Tom Rath. I highly enjoyed it. <sighs> yes, I hope you enjoyed and that you continue to actualize your potential so we can create a better world together. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you'll have an awesome day. See ya.